The Yodo Mini Player is a portable device that's designed to be an alternative to devices with screens that allows children to listen to music, audiobooks, and other audio content. On paper, this sounds great for us parents, but how is the implementation and do children even like it? In this video, I go over the pros and cons I've found that'll help you decide if Yodo Mini is right for your family. So this little thing I'm holding here is $70. It's a screen-free audio player, but it's worth it. And by the way, this is not a sponsored review or ad from Yodo. We got the Yodo Mini as the device looked interesting and we wanted something a bit more portable compared to the Tony box we already owned. Which of course brings us to one of Yodo Mini's best selling points, the size. The player is small and light so that even toddlers with small hands can easily hold and use it. Even my 14 month old daughter has no issues carrying around the Yodo Mini as she's listening to music. The Yodo Mini is recommended for ages 3 and up. That's because there are small parts that are used to make it, so it could be a potential choking hazard. Although I haven't noticed any of the parts that can easily come off or anything, but it's still better to err on the safe side and keep a close watch over children that are younger than 3 when using the Yodo Mini. The concept of the Yodo Mini is very simple where you insert the Yodo cards into the player to play music. Both my 3 year old and 1 year old understood how to get the music or stories to play after I showed them just one time. However, as you can see, the Yodo Mini doesn't turn on by itself automatically. You do have to press the gray button on the side that turns the player on. Um, it's not a big issue or anything as this falls in line with most electronic device and having an on and off button. The issue I've noticed is that if you insert the card before turning on the Yodo Mini, the audio on the card doesn't automatically play after the player boots up. I found that it's best to let the device completely turn on before inserting a card. You'll know when the device is up and ready, when the smiley face disappears and the clock shows up on the screen. I liked how the cards are very secure and there's no chance of the card falling out or coming out of the player themselves. So if the Yodo player gets knocked over, it'll keep playing. The bad news is that since the card is held tightly inside the player, it requires a bit of force to pull the card out and change them. For older children, this shouldn't be an issue, but it took a while for my son to figure out the amount of force he needed to exert to pull the cards out. In the beginning, it was frustrating for him as he was having some difficulties, but after a couple days, he seemed to have figured it out. My daughter, on the other hand, can't change out the cards if she wants to change the music and listen to something else. There are two ways to listen to the audio, through the speaker on the front or by plugging it in through the 3.5mm audio port. The speakers have pretty decent volume that works well around the house, but in a crowded area like a restaurant or something, using a headset would probably offer a better experience and also not bother anyone else. Yodo does sell a headset, but as far as I can tell, you can use any brand headsets. This headset I bought previously works very well. Also, if you're worried your child might blast their music a bit too loud and potentially damage their hearing when using the headphones, you can actually set a limit of the max volume in the app. Another great option to limit the volume is by purchasing a headset that has limit built inside so that music doesn't get too loud when using the headset. The controls on the Yodo Mini are slightly different depending if you have a card inserted or not. With a card inserted, the left knob controls the volume. If you press down on a button, it goes to the previous track. The right knob when turned allows you to navigate either backwards or forward through the track list. Simply press the right knob to play the track selected. You can also skip to the next track by pressing on the right knob without changing any selections. The gray button on the side is used to power on the device but also serves as a play pause button. Another way to pause or stop the player is to remove the Yodo card. Whenever you put the card back in, it resumes play. And a nice little touch is that the spot the audio player stops, it's saved even when you insert a different card. With the Yodo cards removed, the knobs behave a bit differently. The left knob still controls volume, but the right knob now serves as a way to activate the Yodo daily podcast and the Yodo radio. A single press of the right knob takes you to the podcast and two presses will play the radio. For these two features, you need to be connected to the internet to access. Access to the podcast and radio does not require any additional cost or subscription. For adults, these instructions are pretty simple. However, for younger children, this might be an issue. Of course, my 14-month-old daughter has no comprehension of how to actually use any of the controls. But even my 3-year-old son doesn't fully grasp the concept of all the buttons. He knows the left increases volume, but as with young children, they love to press buttons. So he does sometimes just press the knobs just because 
and ends up wondering why the song keeps skipping or rewinding. My five-year-old niece also owns a Yodo Mini and I've noticed that she doesn't seem to have any issues understanding how to use the Yodo Mini. So keep that in mind if you're planning to get this for a younger child. It's possible the button controls might cause some frustration. Technically, there is a small screen on the Yodo Mini, but its use is only for pixel art of the track being played, the track number to skip to, and a clock. The screen doesn't show anything like a video or used as entertainment itself. The battery life on the Yodo Mini is advertised at 16 hours, but of course this varies depending on how you're using the Mini. Anything that requires internet streaming is of course going to drain the battery faster and the screen display on time also plays into this. I haven't done any official battery drain test to see how many hours it lasts, but I would say that it should easily last 16 hours. My estimate is that my kids have listened to and used it for at least 10 plus hours since I last charged it, and the battery is still showing that it still has a decent amount left, probably about 30-ish percent. The Yodo Mini has a USB Type-C charging port, which is great as I already have plenty of these chargers laying around the house. It does come with a nice USB-C cable, but you can use any. I'm glad they didn't make a proprietary cable so that if the included cable breaks or if you leave it behind, it's easier to find a replacement. The last thing you want is for your family to be on a road trip and realize you left the charger behind and your child won't be able to listen because there's no way to charge the player. The Yodo Mini is made of plastic and doesn't offer me much confidence that it'll survive too many drops. They do offer a silicone case that they call a jacket in multiple colors for $19.99. That's not cheap as it's about a third of the price of the Yodo Mini itself. We did end up purchasing one though. This one here is the light green color and we purchased it because we expect my daughter and even my son to drop this a couple times and I would rather pay a bit more now instead of having to repurchase a whole new Yodo Mini later. For this next feature, I don't really see us using it often, but you can use the Yodo Mini as a Bluetooth speaker. This comes in handy if you want to play a song for your child from Spotify or even play an audiobook that you got from, say, Audible or the library. On the Bluetooth mode, it's pretty easy. Just hold down the volume button for about 3 seconds and then you should enter pairing mode. Getting the device connected to the internet via the app isn't hard as the instructions on the app are fairly easy to follow. However, there is downside in that you have to connect the Yoda Mini to Wi-Fi in order for any of these cards to work. When you first insert a card and you're connected to the internet, the Yodo Mini will play the card via the cloud. But to play the card offline, you'll need to allow time for the Yodo Mini to download the card. The frustrating part is that this is done all behind the scene, so there's no way to tell the player to download the contents. The player will download the contents when it's not in use but still turned on. I found the best way is that after you're done using it, just kind of leave it on and don't turn it off and just allow it time to download the contents. Luckily, you can check in the app what cards have been downloaded into the player, so there's no need to guess if certain cards will work when you're out of the house. I would say the hardest part of setup is just figuring out what everything does, and hopefully this video should have given you a head start on understanding how to use the Yoda Mini. That's the gist of the Yodo Mini player, but you can't get the most out of the player without the Yodo cards. There are several different types of Yodo cards ranging from stories, music, activity, sound effects, podcasts, radio, and even make your own playlist cards. Most of the card types are self-explanatory like stories, music, podcasts, and radio cards. Activity cards range from having exercises your child can listen and follow along to, or new words to teach them. They name their sound effect cards soundscapes, but these basically contain audio like white noise or sounds that certain animals or vehicles makes. My favorite card, of course, is the Make Your Own card, which allows you to upload your own audio files to Yodo's server so you can link them to one of these cards. And once those audio files are made into a playlist and linked to the card, then you can just insert it in and use them just like any of the other Yodo cards. Having the ability to make your own cards really does open up the full playbook. You can use it to maybe even have books that are in your native language or even have stuff that you bought previously and you don't have to buy too many of these cards so that you still have them. I love that the welcome card that comes with the Yodo Mini is a make your own card. So after you're done listening to the welcome message, you can go in and just replace it with your own playlist. On these make your own cards, there's no limit on how many times they get rewritten over. The only real limits are the files and the file sizes you put into these cards. Each card can put a playlist of up to 100 tracks. Max track length is 60 minutes runtime, while all tracks added up can't be more than 6 hours. Personally, I think this limit is pretty reasonable. The only issue I see here is if you have longer audiobook files. 
you might need to find a program to split the files into smaller runtime, which is probably better in terms of having to change between the tracks as this makes it easier to navigate. The price of the Yodel cards range from $2.99 per card all the way to $14.99 per card. Usually the lower price cards are for podcasts or radio station, which would of course require internet connections to listen to. Usually the cards that are in collaboration with other brands like Disney cost a bit more at $12.99 per card. They also have packs which are basically bundles of multiple cards that offer a decent discount. Of course, the discount varies depending on the pack you purchase. And interesting enough, they also offer digital cards, which are usually cheaper than physical ones. To listen to the digital cards, you can have two options. You can either use the app to play the card through the player, but of course, this will require internet connection. Or you could link the digital card to one of these make your own cards. Make your own cards are probably the best deal as a pack of five only costs $14.99, making them about $3 per card. Of course, the downside to make your own card is that the physical art on the cards won't exactly match the story or music on them. As you can see, it can still get pretty expensive if you start purchasing many cards. But with the make your own cards, there are plenty of chances to create a unique experience for your child. The ultimate question, would I recommend this product to you? While the $70 price tag of the Yodo Mini isn't cheap, I wouldn't consider it expensive for the amount of things it can do. I would say that compared to many alternatives in the market, the Yodo Mini has pretty good value and is much more portable. If you're looking for a screen-free portable audio player for your child, I would say the Yodo Mini is an excellent choice. That is if your child is a bit older, maybe around four or five years old. I'm not saying that younger child won't understand or enjoy it. My three-year-old and one-year-old really enjoy it, but they still have a hard time navigating the units. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out when I compare the Tony Box to the Yodo Mini player. And let me know down below in the comment section if you have any questions about this Yodo Mini. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.